there, dipshits. It's me, Joey, a.k.a. Slooty Mage. I'm Hunter, voice of Hunter Taylor. And I'm Carter, Eagle Eagle. We're Older and Dumber. Every Friday, we drop wisdom, humor, and a whole lot of nonsense. You won't want to miss it. Become a patron today for as low as $5 a month. Get early access to all our episodes and exclusive behind-the-scenes looks at all the things we're doing and May's super-secret editing notes. Shout out to our awesome dipshits. Your support really helps keep this madness going. Join the crew. Be a dipshit. It's an exclusive club and you're invited. Throw dipshits working kit on here every Friday for a dose of older and dumber craziness. See you there. Fade to black. On my stand. Fade to black. (laughs) 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 They only got the the scream. They didn't get the build up. We should just do an episode of the podcast that's all metal screams. That's how we communicate for the entire episode. I wash our wig! I wash our wig! Was it good? <laughs> and then you're just like, one, something's got to be. <laughs> Two, then we play D&D. Three, then we <laughs> more D&D. Four, roll some dice. Five. Oh my god. <sighs> oh, that's the best. That's good. We should do a music. We're a metal podcast now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of feel like an idiot sometimes. Although I am an idiot, so it kind of works out. Did you eat a lot of paint chips when you were a kid? That's so funny. Last time I heard that, I laughed so hard I fell off my dinosaur. Put that cookie down. Now, that is the most real, authentic, hysterical laugh of my entire life because that is not a plan. What's your record for consecutive questions asked? Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. I'm trying to think about how the musical intro would go. Welcome to the Older and Dumber Podcast, 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 the podcast about three dumb friends, dumb friends, dumb friends, just trying to make it on this planet we call... Exactly. See, it'd be perfect. We we could make a musical. The older number. Somebody has to replace Tenacious D. Mm. Oh, that was too soon. That hurt me. That was too soon. Hello, Joey. Welcome to another week of uh of the two of us. Yeah. Yeah. The you two guys of tired us. of us yet? Surprisingly enough, here we are, two of us from Checkpoint Gaming Lounge at the Arnett Mall. Yeah. The favorite that place. Was, ooh, to... That was crisp. I yeah, liked that. That see? was good. You got to hit that's that every did. time. That's what I did in the bathroom when you were. You see, you were preparing that? I was like, I got to. <laughs> he looked in the here. mirror and May, he's like, May's always like, you guys never put it in. Well, there you go. We do. It's usually right at the end. Well, I, I think we did miss it a couple of times for sure. But no, that was that was crisp. I want that every start of every episode that was wow no there's no one here to distract me so (laughs) oh yeah that was chef's kiss very good uh continue do it again if you're if you're concerned about where our third host is uh ask in the comment section yeah someone will reply someone will probably me but yeah one of us one of us i always reply as older and dumber because my own when we set up the older and dumber page you just used yours well, I had because when you have a YouTube, mm-hmm. you can make multiple different profiles, and I made an older and dumber one, not realizing like because it's still connected to our older and dumber Gmail, but it's also connected to my regular Gmail. So in order for me to do stuff, I have to switch between the two. Like if you have like two accounts on Instagram, kind of thing, and it's like that's so much work. I can just comment. Well, as I have to have the icon two times. Uh, it's like three times actually. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, it's the two of us again, guys. Uh, hopefully you're not uh, bored of us yet. You know, tell us in the comments if you are though. <laughs> yeah, just let us know. And then, you know, the other two episodes before this just won't matter. It's okay. <laughs> well, those would be the ones that set up the board. Oh, uh, right. Exactly. Yes, 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 yes. That makes a lot of sense, Joey. Well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and start getting through this. Cause we have a pretty 
pretty meaty topic this week that I'm very excited a lot for. So to let's dig into. Yeah, so let's just sort of let's a let's thick pot pie of Sith. Oh, that's good. Uh, so let's just get you know our regular stuff going. How's how's your week been? How you know, how have I mean you know we hang out quite often. Yeah. We see each other. We talk Probably a lot. But... Week when I think we spent like every day together. Did we this last Pretty week? Gay, honestly. <laughs> Pretty gay. I don't know if we spent every day together, but we definitely well because we had the party and then yeah, all the other it was, stuff. It was someone's birthday party. They're not here to talk about it, so so we, we, won't, well we not... won't bring that up. I mean. Seems wrong. Yeah. Yeah. We wouldn't want to spoil it. Disingenuous. Yeah. Yep. But we were there together. So. Yes, 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 yes. We um, were all there. The boys were there. We played that new league mode. Oh, we have been playing that like crazy. I mean, it's gone now when you're hearing this, but. <laughs> I don't know if it will be. I think they plan on keeping it as like a mode. Yeah, but they say that every time, and then it gets yeah. too popular, and they're like, this is ruining Summoner's Rift. <laughs> no one's play. playing draft pick. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> the frog is back. I'm glad to hear that he's okay. Yeah. Haven't heard him in a while. Carbonated monster instead of non-carbonated. Oh, yeah, what'd you get? What is that? It's the grapefruit one here. You've been inquiring many times. So you About this well grapefruit just... one? Yeah. First, it's sour. Then it's sweet. <laughs> it smelt really bad, but it actually tasted pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like I not I shouldn't say it smelt really bad. Like it's like you know I'm smelling fucking feces. It smells like uh, grapefruit. It just yeah, it's just it, it, grapefruit. Okay, it smelt weird, but it tasted good. Uh, so yeah, we've been playing a lot of swarm. Um, what else? What else do you do this week? Steps, baby. Oh, I've, you did. I've had. Uh, I think I've only had two days in the last two weeks that have been under 10,000 steps. What have you been doing to get your steps in? Just going and walking, man. Walking around the lake, walking down in the walking trail near my house. Gotta You're walking get... around your house? No, the walking trail down in the park near my house. There's no park near your house. I've been to your house. You go down the hill. So you mean go into town? Go down the hill, not into town. <laughs> the park is not in town yet. Oh, right, right, right. Um, yeah, got to get you know those theme park steps going. Yeah, got to get them theme park. Be ready steps for in. those thirty thousand step days. I know. I gotta get out there walking again, or at least doing something, at yeah. least to get ready. You've got the worst feet of all. Well, maybe might top you now, but yeah, because <laughs> maze are broken. You got broken feet. Um. <laughs> Oh man! She's gonna get you in the notes for that. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into some maybe like you know different sock arrangements. He's gonna get and... orthopedic Forrest Gump shoes. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I'll look into some stuff, and then plus I got I got my stool in. My stool... mama says they're my magic legs. <laughs> yeah. Um. I got my stool in. Oh so stool... yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. did. You get one, dude. I actually, day? I did. I, I was, had to I was just... call and complain today because my packages got lost, and I'm like, you need to reset me. Oh, what? <laughs> so hopefully, I'll have like multiple new chargers yes. and backpacks. And... <laughs> um. So yeah, I literally like two hours before Prime Day ended, I decided I'm gonna go take a look at Prime Day deals, and I found some stuff. Three things in particular that I was like, I need to get these. These are for the trip. Yeah. Um. So I got a stool. Mm -hmm. This is the one you sent me. So originally forty dollars, only twenty dollars. So I was like half yeah. off. Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna grab that. So I grabbed that. Then for the car ride, I got this really dope neck pillow mm. that has a hood on it. Mm. So, so it's you look like the executioner. <laughs> yeah. So it's the neck pillow, and it's comfy as shit. Like I'm like, wow, very comfy, and it tightens up in the front, so you can either so make it tighter or looser. Yourself. No, so you can just like bad. get it under your get it under your chin or not and then it has a hood attached to it that goes over to cover your eyes yeah. for when it's so sunny you look out like the reaper yes i look like the reaper the donut reaper so i got one of those for the car um and then i also got myself a sun hat Ooh. yeah i got myself a nice snug uh sun hat that can get wet so it cools you down and uh and it's and it's um what i'm trying to say very firm so it's not, it's not floppy it's like firm i mean you can you know so obviously you can fold it up and stuff like but um a, like a 
straw hat? Like <laughs> straw hat Luffy? No, it's not a straw hat. It's it's, it's like, like a, a baseball cap. No, I didn't get a fucking if I got a baseball cap, I would have said I got a baseball cap. I don't know what you're talking about. I got about. a sun hat. You know what a sun hat is? Uh, well, when I think of that, I think of ladies in the garden with their straw hat Luffy's on. <laughs> I knew you'd think I knew you'd think of some fucking straw hat Luffy stuff. No, here, I'll show you. I got it. So yeah, like, like I said. Cowboy I, hat? No. I, well, I mean it kind of looks like one a little bit. A fedora? No, not a fedora. <laughs> he says a fedora. Oh my god, we only got five G's in here, so I can't look up Durag. nothing. Oh, like a bucket cap. Yeah, but bigger because it's sun hat. Yeah. It's got a little yeah. bit wider rim, but it's a bucket hat. Yeah, but it like it. You can, you get it wet, and it's like, uh, it's also sweat resistant and all that, so mm. um, cools you down. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. So dude. when we can't ride Tiana's because it's broke down perpetually. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be able to get wet when we don't get splashed on it, the ride. Yes, exactly. But it's got, you know, it's got the strap and all that stuff too. So, you know, even if I, so one, it folds up really nice. So mm. I can put it in my pocket if I have to, you know, for specific rides. Yeah. Um, or I can just, because it's got the strap, hold it on my neck and put it behind me mm. and then I won't lose gets it. It's caught in the, in the drop. Yeah, exactly. The decapitation. <laughs> oh yeah, it would suck. Um, I feel like a string like that would break before it decapitated me i don't know because it's only like uh i mean it's enough to hold space age cotton fibers yeah because <laughs> it's only being held by like a plastic mechanism i feel like that would break before it completely decapitated me yeah we just finished prime day what else what else what is everything you got from prime day what'd you get from prime day deals I got a crossbody bag, a new sling bag. Oh fuck! I want to get a new suitcase. Yeah, I you were too. just. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm gonna grab one of Dolly's. I think they've got big ones there for like fifty bucks. Fifty? Yeah. That's still kind of a lot, but not when you look at other stores. It's like yeah. half the price. Well, when you go, give me pictures and stuff. I, I will. Uh, my Prime Day. Yep, that's what I was waiting for. New sling bag. Um, I got a new portable charger. That does high speed charging. I got uh, new high speed charging Type C, mm. uh, and I got a oh a, new, a multi plug wall outlet that does mm. multiple chargers and nice okay very an cool additional outlet and... <clears throat> very cool. I've been trying to buy us car stuff. Every time I go to Amazon, I'm like car trip essentials and it's like you get these Wheels organizers the bus. yeah you get these organizers that'll hang off the back of like the front seats and i'm like i mean that's kind of cool you know we can put all our stuff in it but it's like man well, whatever and then it's like there's car trash bins but these trash bins are small and i'm like that's not fucking fitting a 24 hour is usually like michaela's seat you know she, <laughs> by the end of the trip she's got her little nest built her little possum nest oh my gosh <laughs> uh but they've got these little bin things with trash cans in it. And I'm like, oh, that's that's really nice. And then you look at the picture and it's like, it fits a bottle. And I'm like, <laughs> there's six people in the car. How the hell are we going to throw enough stuff away for 24 hours worth of car ride? Probably just best to throw out at every stop. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm continuing to look and I'm trying to like see if there's anything cool. You know, something for us to like, because, you know, we watch like TV shows and movies while we're going down. We don't do that. That's a lie. Don't listen to him. Yes, we do. I will continue to not to deny that in an official capacity. <laughs> oh my gosh! I watch movie. The rest of the car watches movies and oh, TV yeah, shows. Not the driver specifically. Yeah, not the driver, dummy. That's so illegal. Um, <laughs> movies and TV shows. And I'm trying to see if there's any cool. The the coolest thing I found as was as long a, as the sun hasn't gone down. Yeah, uh, the coolest thing I've found so far is these these screens that go in the like headrest but it's only meant for people who are like behind the front seats mm -hmm. and i'm like can you build something that's for like the dashboard i wonder why they don't have that product <laughs> i wonder why that product doesn't exist uh so i'm trying to look for we're something gonna like put tv on the dashboard <laughs> Um, I did, however, find this this one cool phone holder thing and i almost grabbed it but it, it said it had a um it said it was like those slide resistant things, but it didn't stick or suction. And I was like, there's no fucking way that that will stay up. Uh, there's no way. 
It looked really nice, but I was like, you're lying to me. There's no way that stays on the on the dashboard. I'm not getting it. Um, so I didn't, you know, so I've been trying to just find cool, like, car essentials. Like, there's these these tray things. It's a cup. It's a cup holder that goes in the cup holder, but attached to it is, like, a lunch tray that swivels <laughs> for us to eat food, you know? Um, and I almost was like, oh, that seems really cool, but it's, like, doesn't fit all cars. And I'm like, come on, help me. <laughs> Stop making me second guess. Um, there's this thing that attaches to the steering wheel and it, so it, it hooks on the top and hooks on the bottom and it opens up and it's a tray for food. <laughs> Obviously you have to be stopped to eat, but yeah. it's uh, yeah. <laughs> because you know, if you ever have to turn, <laughs> all of just your food gone. Is gone. It's gyroed actually. So it won't. Oh my God. That, be that would be sick. That would be wild. Guys, what did you get for prime day? Tell us in the comments. Yeah, that's a good conversation. Let us know. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I've been trying to look at like cool car essentials for us to, I don't know, make the trip maybe a little more fun or more ease. Like I keep trying to think about the things that we complain about, but there's not hate to having family car time. No, I, what the fuck? I'm trying to enhance our family car time. Um, but I keep trying to try and think of the things that we complain about in the car the most, but I can't never really sure comes to May mind when i'm remind looking you in the notes oh yeah and then i'll know what to shop for mm -hmm. once uh once she puts that in there it'll be easy enough to remember i don't know how do you feel about the thing my stuff? what i'm talking about I don't think we need any of that seems excessive wow. He's like, I don't need none of your, none of your, 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 your new age Dude, car Back when shit. I had my Model T, all we had in there was a crank to start it. <laughs> and then you had to stand up and drive it. Cause you there had was to no stand seat. up and drive You were just holding on real hard. <laughs> Doing squats the entire 15-hour drive. And let me tell you, it's not easy to drive stick when you're standing. <laughs> oh, I bet. Both feet are on the front. Oh, uh, you're always in cruise control because you can't do anything. Speaking of classic cars, I also was a little inspired this week to start working on something. He doesn't look at him draw a blank. He fucking liked the comments. You mentioned a classic car. Mm -hmm. The only thing I've seen you working on this week is drawings of furries. Was Fox specifically? <laughs> it wasn't. See, I see. It was a Fox specifically and it's connected to a story that I'm calling Bushwood. <laughs> Why is it called Bushwood? <laughs> Please tell me more. Uh, so it's going to be an erotic action comedy. That's so many genres. It's three. So many genres. Yeah, well, Erotic somebody's... action comedy. It's going to be a comic? Mm hmm. Should get it animated. Maybe. Get it animated. I need money. Guys, if you back the Patreon, <laughs> then you can get this. You can get Bushwood, a erotic action comedy. It's uh, set in the. No, night. dude. No, no, no. Do it in the announcer voice. I don't want to do, do it in the epic now. trailer I'm man doing voice. A pitch, not a do trailer. It. Epic trailer man makes right. everything better. You translate it. I tran. Epic. You say it and I translate it. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Where we start so from it's, the beginning? It's, 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 let me give you, you know, mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. stuff to work with here. Uh, it's set in the 1970s rural South. Is that enough? You need more. Hold on. <clears throat> What was the 70s was hippies? Late 70s, early 80s. So we're past hippies. We're past hippies. Yeah. Okay. America? Yeah. You said South what? Rural South. Rural South. Okay. <clears throat> the time is 1970. Welcome Seven. to the... It's late 70s, early 80s. I said the 1970s. Yeah, and then I added to that and said late 70s, early 80s. In the rural southern part of America. All right, so there's a fox named Trixie 
and there's a possum named Piper. Okay. They're both they're both women. Yeah. Two bad girls go on a road trip. Not a road trip. Damn it! <laughs> I was guessing. Uh, it's more like a gender bent Dukes of Hazard. Sounds like a road trip. No, because they're always in one the same place. Okay. Road trip would imply you're traveling somewhere. Okay, keep going. Um. And uh, so it's yeah, that's that's the general idea. Like it's a it's a Dukes of Hazard smoking the bandit parody, except it's furries and sexy time. I like I said, I just did the character this week, so I don't have a heck of a lot here in my notes. In the rural southern part of America, we have two. In Bushwood, the cars are fast, and the women are faster. Trixie and Piper run the law more ragged than the roads, but the boys in town love the chase. Oh, that's not... Yeah, that's the genre stuff that I yeah, told you. The <laughs> uh, setting should be... The setting should be <laughs> late 70s to early 80s. Like I said. Rule America. South. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. I thought you had more than this. I saw. I saw more than this on. I hadn't even the interweb stuff that I hadn't shared. One page before. Is the. This is blank. <sighs> oh, would you look at that? I thought you were really getting some inspiration going. Yeah, I'm cooking. Good. Yeah, this guy's cooking. This guy's cooking. What's Piper look like? Hmm. Piper has been shared before as well, but I'm probably going to have to do a little before? bit of a redesign for Piper because she's sort of modern punk, so I'd have to push her look back a little bit. Is this an old character, this Piper? Yeah, she's not in the sketchbook, bro. Well, why the fuck not? Because. Yeah, that looks like the same character. It does not. <laughs> okay. You don't know what characters look like. I haven't even done a colored version of Trixie yet. Also, I have to, like I said, I have to push Piper's look back to more of a late seventies, early eighties punk. So it's a fox and a possum. Yeah. Why a fox and a possum? I don't know. That's what I was into at the time. <laughs> well, a fox because she's gonna outfox the law. Sure. Right. And a possum because I already had the possum character. So oh my god! Seems like because I, I already, I mean, I already did it. So, <laughs> like, is it's in the early phases. I don't even have any like story. But it's like, why is a fox and a possum hanging out with each other? No. Why not? Where's my lore? There's no lore yet. I'm gonna need some. Where's well, my when fox I get possum it, lore? I'll let y'all know. Where's my fox possum lore? You know, Joey. In order to create. A uh, an artistic. I don't work on this anymore. Oh, stop! I'm trying to segue. In order to create an artistic. We didn't even do your week. Why are we segueing? <laughs> we, we both did our weeks like together. Oh, okay. You didn't I have anything think... else. You... I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know we had what a party. he's trying to skip. What? We had a party. Uh... Voice of Hunter Hunter Taylor, the oh. voice that gets you moist. Did you get any roles this week? No, I'm still waiting for the script. That's what he was trying one. to skip. Where you play a possum. No, I don't play a possum. Why you don't, oh, you're a hyena. I'm a hyena. You vo- tried to voice a, a I possum. tried to voice the possum, but I did not get the possum. That's why I, but I got That's why hyena. he doesn't want a possum. In the- yeah, what the fuck? It's PTSD, man. It's too soon. It's too soon. You know, Joey, if I were to re-envision your, mm-hmm. your, your artistic vision of this comic, mm-hmm. you know, I'd have a lot to say. But today... We're going to be doing that with something different. Yeah, it's like three weeks out of the news cycle now, guys. The Wackalite. Everyone's favorite Star Wars project that's (laughs) fallen out of the Nielsen ratings after its fourth episode. What's the Nielsen ratings? Uh, You remember how they used to have TV back in the day when there was cable? (laughs) Remember when there was TV? And they were like... We rate this show this much because this is how oh, many Oh, the Nielsen watch. family. Yeah. A Nielsen. What was that from? That's from uh, 
Family Guy. It's real though. They... No, right. I know, but the episode yeah. where they become a Nielsen family and he gets like two thousand Nielsen boxes <laughs> and makes TV how he wants. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember yeah. now. Um, those Ruins. ratings still exist, surprisingly really? enough. And uh, that's actually very. I did not know that. That's yeah. Very there's also another. That feels like a very outdated way to rate there is a there's a newer one too and i can't think of what it's called I'm but it's the rotten tomatoes no it's like a digital nielsen rating hi guys i'm may and i'm the editor of the older and dumber podcast do you know what hell i go through each week editing these do you know how much shade i throw at the guys for existing you would if you were sub to our patreon patrons get week early access to all our episodes and also get a sneak peek at my super secret editing notes up today at older and dumber that's older the letter n dumber on patreon see you later dipshits our topic today is to talk about the acolyte disney's star wars tv show if you have not seen it you should go watch it then continue this episode but if you don't feel like watching it spoiler warning bing, 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 bing. so yeah. it was it was essentially supposed to be a show that told a dark side story, which got well, a lot of people excited to see, you know, a Star Wars show told from, you know, the bad guy's perspective. He's already like, that doesn't sound right. But that was what the basic premise was when it was announced. Hmm. Continue. <laughs> set in the High Republic era, yes, by the so way. So it is set a uh, hundred years before where Couple the hundred. Not exactly. I, I think 100, it's a hundred, it? yeah, hundred before where the prequels would have picked up. Interesting. I thought it was like two or three, yeah, but anyway, that far back, unfortunately. <laughs> we'll double check later, but still, it's probably a hundred. Yeah. Anyway, High Republic era, um, which is actually a really cool era within Star Wars, and they've been writing a lot of books lately that are all mm -hmm. canon. I'm um, within that era, and uh, well, it's something different. So. Yeah, and it that was the big thing for the Acolyte is that. This is something like, we've never explored. This this is the furthest back any Star Wars property has gone. Nice Let's, the old Republic. Technically not. Well, <laughs> no, it did just become canon. Pretty positive. Um, so yeah, never mind. Because okay, they're they're pushing rapid. Sorry, now, so. live action. We'll say yeah. it's the furthest <laughs> back live action um, that uh, has been put put forward. Um, let's say Disney property. It's the first Disney created. That's outside of like the prequels yes yeah yeah, yeah. The... um so you know it's supposed to be it was supposed to be hot outside of the skywalker saga yeah <gasps> go ahead continue <laughs> uh so it's the story of a pair of twins at least that's how it appears at the start of the show mm -hmm. uh who are powerful in the force a group of jedi has has tracked this pair down through a quest to find a virgins virgins <laughs> in the force uh they assume that it's these two girls uh because of you know they don't mm. just gonna is this it's getting a little far it's a little farther in than it they're they're raised by witches um something bad happens one of the girls is taken to be a jedi we don't really know what happened uh we're shown a couple of flashbacks sort of asked to figure it out um, one of the twins who we thought was dead is actually still alive. Spoilers. Um, she is on a revenge quest against these Jedi that took her sister away. Um, we find out that there is a Sith operating in the shadows. Yeah. Um, who is apparently one of the twins trainers. Uh, things happen. Lies are told. Uh, Freaky Friday. What more lies Twilight. will the Jedi Council tell? I think it covered everything. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, the story mostly cover mostly um, follows who you have to assume the main character, Osha. Um, Violation. <laughs> her name is Osha. That's one of the twins. She technically is the main character of the show, so you're following her. Um, you know, like Joey said, you finally meet May, who's her twin sister. Wait, is um, it... Uh... Amanda Stem. Oh, I don't remember her. Amandala. She's got a weird, kind of weird first name. We'll have to look it up. I'm not sure if I remember her real name. Um, but yeah. So all in all, 
if we talk about the show, it, you know, as Joey said, it's the twins. Uh, basically, they come from a witch's cult um, born from an all uh, woman's um, coven. Or that's what a coven is, I think. Yeah. Um, it's a group of, of witches. Amandala. Amandala. Amandala um, Stenberg. So twins are born uh, within this coven. Uh, Jedi come to that planet and discover Force Virgins. Uh, you know, they go to take them. Some stuff happens. Um, bad things happen, causing a cover up. Um, and then, yeah, the two twins finally meet back up. Uh, one of them has been being trained by bad guys. In the end, all is revealed of what actually happened. Um, a near and dear cared character is killed because of the lies he told in the name of love. Uh, and then we have Osha who from the beginning was perceived as this good person. And in the end is tempted and brought to the dark side. Um, and that, I mean, that that's pretty much about it. Right. I mean, so I started when we talked about this initially a mm -hmm. couple weeks ago, I'd started off pretty positive on the show. I thought it was yeah. fine. There was some interesting things happening. Uh, we had some different ways of approaching the Jedi. Like, and I like, there was like this martial arts aspect where yes. they wouldn't immediately go for their lightsaber mm -hmm. in there or the force in their attempt to, to deal with issues. Mm -hmm. Like they had, you know, other training besides that, that they could use. Um, there was this sort of revenge plot going. Yeah. Um, Obviously, you know, we figured out the twin thing pretty quick early on. Yeah, very quick. Because the second episode, I want to say, I think. Yeah. They, so. First episode, maybe? They did a lot. Like, they wanted to tell it like a mystery, but they sort of revealed each mystery the next episode. So it mm -hmm. sort of lost its punch every time. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I thought there was a lot of weird writing decisions. There was some weird pacing decisions. The show had a huge budget and it didn't feel like the budget was being applied to the show in any mm. way that really worked most. Of the I time. know where all the money went. <laughs> it was the fight scenes, bro. Mm. Cause first thing we're going to say right now, the fight scenes in the acolyte phenomenal, uh, very, very well done. Very good. Whoever did the fighting choreography for the acolyte. They were probably to... the best Disney lightsaber fights. That they've yeah. Done. And deserves to do it for the rest of the star Wars stuff. stuff. And was good. Yeah, very, very well done. Um, so there's one thing to mark on the Acolyte as I think good, the, very well done. Watching it, like, while it was all choreographed well and looked well, a lot of the times still they had issues shooting. Mm. Like, especially when you see Chimere's first fight in the forest, mm. there was a lot of scenes where it was just, like, static camera, like, far away and you just saw like lightsabers in the dark and it wasn't like dark enough just to be like, Oh, here's the like flashes as they contact or whatever. And it was not engaging. Hmm. Like they were doing really cool stuff, but they weren't shooting in a way that felt cool all the time. Um, I would say that was my only complaint about while they choreographed them while they weren't shot. Well, hmm. One other thing, too, that so we had mentioned when we first started watching it, uh, Master Venari, Venastra. Venastra, the first time we saw her, we both said that is the worst makeup job I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. Like, what the heck? But as the show went further, everybody started looking a lot better. Yeah. So I don't know if like what had happened was the first like what we got in the beginning, the first two episodes were or like if those were proof reshoots. of concepts. Like they had to bring people back because this oh, show had reshoots, a ton of yeah. reshoots. So did they have to bring people back and like they just half assed the makeup when they came back or So maybe. So maybe. But that was one thing I really noticed near the end is I went, Why the fuck does that look so much better? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hold on a second. I think they might have shot that last episode first. You think so? Yeah. Interesting. It while it looked good, it felt in parts where it was di it felt disconnected from the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. um, again, with weird writing decisions, and mm -hmm. obviously, like the sets look better, the production looks better. Um, it felt. I think they shot that first. Mm -hmm. I think they shot 
all those scenes before they had shot anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we'll say one other thing too. They did the lightsabers practically, and I don't know if I liked it. I guess I don't know what you mean. They used force effects lightsabers. Really? Yeah. I mean, usually they just use they make them metal in, hilts yeah, with big ass sticks off of them. Post production, they do all the actual lightsaber effects. Yeah, I think like the, you, like the lightsabers looked fat. Oh, I don't know if I noticed that as much. Yeah, as, I mean, it's not a huge gripe, but it did like they didn't look like blades. They just looked like you know, force effects lightsabers. <laughs> What's wrong with those? We spent hundreds of dollars on them. <laughs> Um, interesting. I thought they just did the same old where it's the hill and then a big ass stick comes off of it and they edit it later. It was all practical. So then, you know, they would, um, not run into the usual issues of like getting caught in cloaks or whatever. Huh? Interesting. Um, cool. Okay. So what are we doing here? We're going to rewrite this. So it makes a little bit more sense. The acolyte written by older and dumber. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what we're doing. How now? This was this was sort of your baby here. What are we? How so are we doing this? We're gonna go. Following your we, lead. We both have ideas of what could have been improved. Yes. We're still gonna sort of go through this series, not episode by episode, but as you know, a general overview. Um, you know, introduction, rising action, climax, essentially. Okay. So we're you know we're rewriting the acolyte. Yeah. Okay. So then I think how we should start this is. The Acolyte, what is it? What 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 is our general concept of the Acolyte? Without making a full story, what are we hoping to get out of this so story? So instead of a mystery, mm-hmm. this is a martial arts revenge story. I don't know if I love revenge. What about espionage? No, 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 no. <laughs> he says, all right, we're going to go back and forth. If you don't like this, then we go there. <laughs> No, 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 no. Explain why espionage, because to me, this felt like a, like a revenge story. We're rewriting it though. I know, but we're going to try to keep it to its, to its roots, but make it better. Mm. See what I, well, I like the martial arts. They lost that revenge plot through most of the story. And that's why it feels disjointed. Okay. Um, well, I don't know if I saw the revenge plot, but I think... Well, let me try to win you to it. Yes. Okay. So, instead of... We keep the same cold opening. Which was what? Osha walks into the cantina. Oh, you even want to... That was May. Yeah. But you want to? You even want to keep the same characters? Yes. I was thinking of getting rid of Osha and May. We, we will get rid of some characters, I think, as we go. But they are the... Sorry, Amanda Stenberg. <laughs> You're the weakest <laughs> point in the show. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, but yes. See, that was the first thing I wanted to get to was what was our general concept and then what characters are we keeping? I want to get rid of May and Osha. I want the stranger to be the main character. No, no, no. See, we're getting rid of Kamir. We're going to get rid of Kamir? Why would we get rid of Kamir? Well, if you let me explain. All right, all right, go ahead. Fuck it. <laughs> okay, so we keep the same cold opening. We Which have, is May comes in to go kill May Master comes Indara. In to kill Indara. Okay. That plays out almost exactly the same. Except Master Indara doesn't die, because I know that was your biggest nope. garp with the first episode. It happens, but oh. it happens differently. It happens in a way that makes sense? Yes. <laughs> so as they fight, <laughs> okay. eventually the fight, instead of going upstairs, goes to the bar, and they're fighting on the bar. Okay. And the bartender is, keeps trying to move around. To We don't see what he's doing, but he's moving around trying to trying to shuffle something around. Sure. May gets knocked down. Indara, Off the bar? No, just down onto the bar. Okay. And then Dara's like, you can't beat me. I'm a Jedi master. She's a little cocky, right? She's not a cocky character though. She has to be. Okay. 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 She's a Jedi master. We're trying to show that the Jedi may be not the greatest. That was part of like this show's okay. thing too. All right. She's well over this assassin that's just trained in the dark side Mm -hmm. she's a jedi master Mm -hmm. so she's confident that she has this fight won. sure so she's gloating a little bit she's like you know stay down you can't beat me there's nothing you can do to beat me i'm a jedi master 
who's your master who trained you well she also knows who she was yeah so there's got to be something in that in there too there's no face tattoo though we're getting rid of that bullshit this this the circular yeah. thing but she started the right sure okay that's fine. Go ahead. That can still happen. Okay. But there's no face tattoo. Okay. It makes it more believable that we can screw these two characters up. <laughs> okay. Um, during this gloating, May looks down, sees that the alien guy is protecting a kid. Mm -hmm. Just like in the movie, the kid's there. Show, sure, but yes. We're making May a villain. She grabs the kid and pulls it out from behind the bar and puts a dagger to it. I mean, May was already a villain. She yeah. threw a dagger at him. She was a villain when she felt like it and the story needed it. Gotcha. So May jumps off the bar, grabs the kid. Mm -hmm. Okay. She's going for the kid. Let's say she doesn't grab it. Okay. She's going for the kid. Mm -hmm. um, throws the dagger. Anara stops the dagger. That's when she spins around and catches her off guard. But she doesn't throw it. And R has to move up to stop it. The dagger. Yeah. Okay. Now, during the fight, one of May's daggers got disarmed into the bar. Mm -hmm. So as a, as Indar is going to stop it, mm -hmm. May spin kicks the other dagger into her chest. That's almost the same thing as what happened before. Yeah, but she's more distracted. She's worried about a kid. She's and it's, it's mid-action. Okay. But critique right. it. Come at it. Well, how I would think, you change my vision? I think. I mean, she was still saving a life before, and as she did it, another one was thrown. And your whole thing was that she couldn't have stopped both. And I, you know, she's distracted by saving that person's life. That makes sense. Of course, later on, then we see her being a complete badass and could have totally done both things. Mm -hmm. So. I think we need to do better than just distracted by saving a life. Um, I think it needs to be a choice that she had to make um, that causes her death. Sure. Um, What's the choice? So I'm going to have to think something more like mm, daggers can be stopped. Blasters can't. But May's not carrying a blaster. That's her whole thing. She's technically supposed to not be killing with a weapon. So maybe it's something to do with the building. The building itself somewhere topples. And the kid or the bartender are in the way. And Indara, in order to save them, will have to get them out of the way. But it's in a way where she was standing next to them to protect like a, the dagger throwing or something. So maybe it's a little bit like this. Um, over top of the bar, a little bit higher is let's say a large mounted head of some creature that has horns in it. Right. Um, let's call it, what's the, what's the one with the Mandalorians? What's that called? A mud horn or something. No mud horn. Yeah. yeah. Something like something like a mud horn. Okay. Big mounted one on top of the bar. She stops the dagger like before stops it. Right. And, but she's like close by. So then she throws, she makes a dagger go like away, jumps down to the family and is like, you need to get out of here. But at that time, May is either doing something else with it, with a dagger or whatever that causes that portion to topple or break or destroy um, in a fashion that it's so heavy that instead of Indara forcing it to catch it, makes a decision of, I will physically push these people instead. For some reason, the the moment of clarity of decision, instead of the force, which is the thing that Jedi are supposed to like rely on to save them, she thought of them first rather than herself. Push them out of the way, topple, die. Okay. I feel something like that is a bit more believable than the I could have stopped. What both. if it's uh what if there's um there's a heavy like Oh, the upper floors are suspended by something. Mm. And during the fight, 
May is cutting. Yes, the... yeah, hitting the wires. So something like that. Something so that where the is, decision. That, and I like that because that makes May like a smarter character. Yes, because yeah. she knows she can't beat Indara like that either. So she's moving this whole thing, weakening the wires. When they get down there, um, she makes the ceiling fall. Yes, Indara has to push the other ones out of the way, and she gets. That's drunk. much more believable than the I couldn't stop both daggers. Yep. Dagger this big and going a little fast. Big ass fucking thing. You are the body standing next to a child and a man. You take the instinct of pushing rather than the force. I think that makes so much. I think that's more believable. She throws him out of the way and then gets crushed. Yes. More believable, I feel. Good. Okay. Then we go into the the two flashback episodes. That's where we flashback within the first episode. Right after the cold open. We go right into flashback. We take those two episodes. We combine them. I like it. Um, so we show the girls growing up, we show the coven, we show the Jedi, why they're there. I just realized something. I think you have to keep the tattoo. Why? Because if we start with the cold open like that, Mm -hmm. no names are ever said other than I'm looking for master Indara. So we know who Indara is, Mm -hmm. but her name may is never said. Yep. But during the fight, we see the tattoo. I don't want to know who she's fighting. Okay. All right. All right. So that's that gotta one, come up when though. the eyewitness comes in mm-hmm. on the ship after they come get May. Yeah, and he's like, "That's her." Yeah, we all believe that that's her because there's no difference. All right, I will say though, when they came and pointed her out, I already knew it wasn't her, but not because of the tattoo, but because she was on a fucking ship thousands of miles away. <laughs> sure, um, but. Her crew had gone out and partied without her the night before. And we all know that they love to play it fast and loose with hyperspace in Star Wars. So then instead, all right, I, I get it now. Let's get rid of the mask or the, the, the tattoo. We do the flashbacks, mm-hmm. which we'll talk about the flashbacks and what maybe should or shouldn't have been in there. Um, But when it comes to the finger pointing, we, we have to make it more believable because it didn't feel believable. It needs to be more pointed out as believable. Have her have a lot more like, because she woke up to a dream of that. Mm-hmm. It's like, why would you dream about that? Yeah, there's that? no dream. Yeah, <laughs> no dream. Like, there needs to be more of believableness for a while. You know what? She's not on a ship either. She's in a fucking pit like Pelimoto in The Mandalorian. There's droids oh. to repair your starships. She can work on speeders in a garage. I see what you're saying. So switch where she's at, take her off of a ship. Yeah, that seems that seems fine. What else is she doing with her life? She should be repairing robots and astromechs more than ships. Sure. That seems like she knows them wouldn't more. Wouldn't that wouldn't that be a more practical job for someone? Than a mech tech? Yeah. We need to know no more about this mech tech lore. No, we don't. I feel because we have to make there it. There are we have to make a reason why it was important to fix your ship. No, because it doesn't exist in our version of the show. There are droids to fix. Fine, your in ship. our show it doesn't. But but later, Joey, I would like to see if we can look up some more lore she about that text. She is a droid repair person. I like that better. I like that better. Very much so. I like that better. And maybe she's even working on like an Ewok crawler. No, that puts her in Tatooine. Jealous. We do Tatooine. We're not on Tatooine. We do she it way can, too much. She can repair the. And droids. I met she can repair the right. droids on a ship. That's fine. All right. That's fine. Let's do that. Let's do that. So the flashback happens. Yes. Now let's talk about the flashback. Yes. Okay. Uh, What about the flashback do I want to change? I want some more hintentation of... Hintentation? I don't know. Hey, I'm making up words. I got my own vocabulary. I want more hinting at what made them. But I want it to be fucking mad obscure. That you don't know what it was until the end. Some way of doing that, that when you watch the last episode, you go, oh, whoa, so, you know what I mean? You know how I said Chimera is gone. Here's the reason. Yeah. Why are we getting right Chimera? Here's the reason. Um, I actually like him. <laughs> like he's a bad guy, but I like him. Here's the reason. Okay. We're going to Mama Anastasia and Mama Cora. Sure. We're going to build that tension up through the flashbacks to the point where at the end, they are ready to go at each other over this okay okay so 
things play out pretty much the same way in the flashbacks for me. Uh, the major difference, one of the major differences, Torben, he doesn't want to go home because he's homesick. That's fucking stupid. He's a young, dumb kid, Joey. He's young, dumb, and full of cum. <laughs> and he has a little oh. Padawan lover on the side that he's been thinking about for the last seven months. Who does? Torben, the Padawan. Who? In our version. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, I'm gonna we just we keep going back and forth. In our version, <laughs> in our version, Torben has a lover Padawan. Yes. Got you. Okay, okay. So he's already a little shifty. But he's not homesick? He's homesick for her. Instead of just homesick. Instead of I just want to go back to Coruscant. Yeah, but he has to lie. He can't say I want to go back but to my the lover. Audience knows. Oh, okay. We're making it an audience thing. I got you. Okay. The audience knows. <laughs> okay. I thought you were just making stuff up in his head that we would no. never learn about. <laughs> and maybe when he gets his little brain wipe, we find out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I like that. All right, like that. so there's there's more of a reason than I just want to go home. Okay. All right. Also, he's a little bit more excited that this thing that's supposed to be like a major occurrence in the Force that has never happened. Mm -hmm. And when they finally tell him about, hey, we're looking for this thing that's super rare and never happens called a virgins. He's not oh. just like, oh, well, what if we went back to Coruscant, though? <laughs> yeah, okay. Makes sense. And then you know, the, this, this the planet that we're is more on... about, you know, you're missing your lover or yeah. like this loves will bring you to the dark side. And the, Je and... the Jedi have kept her from yeah. you. Yeah, and... this would be more like that. Okay, I like that. That's good. Okay, okay. Um. All right. So that's more the flashback. So we so build it all up the goes tension. Down, like the the fire happens. There's the explosion. Um, all, all of that, that stays still the same. Happens. Okay. The only thing we don't know is we know that Anastasia is Anastasia. Yes, Anastasia is dead. We don't know what happened to Cora. We also don't know that. Oh no, we did technically find that out in this version. Cora's Smilo Ren. Yeah, did you realize that she just turned to smoke and then never showed back up? Uh huh. Mm hmm. In this version, because apparently she went into Kalnaka. Yeah, there is there is no there is no Chimere because Korra is the one who's been like May. She destroyed our whole lives. She took your they took your sister. So Korra is Chimere now. Yes. I'm going to make you the strongest like a, dark side user I can to kill these Jedi. That feels like a tough one to hide. Mostly because Chimere at first specifically was the guide character for me. Sure. The, I also work for him. And I think we could still keep him in that role. Oh, just don't make him smiley Ren. Yeah. Okay. 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 You, you make him sort of that character who's also like an acolyte who's working under Korra, but Korra is the Sith. Okay. But she's never a Sith. We're not going to do a Sith because we're not going to fuck up the, the continuity of the timeline of Star Wars. Well, I mean, there was Sith during the High Republic, yes. but, they're, but, but they, they weren't... But they would um... not do something so brazen to yes. reveal themselves to the Jedi a hundred years before they were ready. Yeah. Um, she is a powerful dark side user already. As essentially a night sister, just let them be dark side users. They don't need to be Sith. Keep the cortosis too. I'm all for like getting that kind of stuff back into the actual lore. Mm -hmm. um, imagine like Jedi coming at her and she's just like <laughs> martial arts fighting with the cortosis and shor shorting their lightsabers out, mm -hmm. kicking them out of their hands, taking them, stabbing them with their own lightsabers. Okay, to be cool. Uh, I don't know if I love Cora being the bad that that bad dark person. I don't know if I like. I like it that what she did was awful, and she I think was, was the perfect angry for her character. And hateful one. She was hangry and ate hangry. <laughs> she was hangry. Too. She was hangry. She, she didn't was... get any of the spice cream. Yes, she was very angry and spiteful. You are correct, but I feel like what she was what her character did was good enough for how much i hated what she did cuz when it came down to it 
had she not been so spiteful, none of it would have happened. Sure. Because, and that's why it makes it better for her to be twisting May's actions into doing her revenge for her. Okay. 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 All right, I don't, I don't hate it. And we I can guess think I'm... she died in the attack. All right, so let's skip forward. Let's skip forward. We get to... She's the one pulling the strings. Mm-hmm. Kaimar is just a lackey, just like May. Yep. Um, They're chasing May down. Well, really, it all... It all starts to climax when they go to go after Kalnaka. Mm-hmm. So what happens there instead? The whole story has to change in about that spot. Why? Well, I mean, if we don't have Quimar come in as Smiley Ren and kill everybody and Kalnaka, then we what? Have they just come in and do it. So we show. So we do the thing that we didn't want, which is show off Cora and show that she's the bad guy again. We don't know. Or show the main she bad guy takes off. Her helmet off the whole time. So you want it that the helmet doesn't come off like it did? Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't want that revealed till the end. Okay. And sure. I, I do want you to play it up where it could be Chimere still. But at that time is when Osha and May switch spots. And if there isn't the reveal of who they are and why do you need a reveal to do that? They can talk to him from behind the helmet the whole time. So Kaimar, let's say it's Korra. They're all there. They start fighting. Same fight mm-hmm. happens. Everybody dies. Soul's the only survivor. Soul is fighting. Is fighting Korra. Soul's smart. Wouldn't Soul figure it out? Why? It's a person behind a mask. And with a voice modulator. In flowy robes. Okay, so they fight. Um, the face isn't revealed. You can still end the fight the same way. Alright, fine. Korra gets Osha instead of May. Well, actually... The whole other big port part was that May was turning herself in and turning to the to to the good side, turning to the Jedi's. You still have that conversation between May and Chimere, and you still get Chimere up in the trap, I think. But then you have Chimere reunite. May goes with the Jedi. Like that still happens. I mean, because now we you have still have to play off that Chimere can be. Sith so they can't be in the same place at the same time fine okay you know you never see Bruce Wayne or Batman at the same time. exactly <laughs> um all right fine so Osha ends up getting taken going to the planet with Corn. yeah Corn reveals herself no still doesn't reveal herself so she's doing what? Just trying to convince Osha. The big thing that pushes her is putting the helmet on. Right. One of the big things that pushes her is putting the helmet on. But and I then... think you can do that through character interaction and writing. All right. Like maybe the whole time it's it's Osha just trying to go to the ship like she intended. And you have this shadowy figure who's pursuing her the entire time, could kill her at any time, but doesn't, and just keeps dropping like these, well, do you remember this? Do you remember how this happened? Haven't you ever asked yourself about this? Okay. So what about... Because you've got to think about season two. I'm not thinking about season two. I'm telling a self-contained story of one season eight episodes and that's it because we're going to have a tight plot all right so what is your rise to action and what is your 
What's your well, we're in rise of ac- rising action right now. Yeah. So what is the ending to the story? So the climax of the story, I think we have to have the sisters face off. When are they facing off? Why? We need to figure out why. Why do you have them facing off? I don't have them facing off. What was your ending? I was getting rid of them. They weren't even in my story. <laughs> I fucking got rid of them. I didn't even want them in the show. I just don't think they were written well, and I don't like their purpose of the of the story. I just I think I think the acolyte should have been the story about the stranger. Like I find his story so much more compelling. Uh, like I don't know, but that's a different thing. Um, but if we were to continue to have Osha and May, I do feel like they could have made the show good as well but it needed to be redone and a lot of the changes that we made i think started us to get there 100 percent um i'm just not getting where you're going with the end of this um and why we now have them fighting each other well i think that it still sticks to may and cora wanting to reveal the truth to may okay that's so and part of that so does may turn good is what we're saying no no may is with soul intentionally to get soul in the same way to come back and like confess in front of yeah Osha. yes okay um and maybe if we are working towards a season two he already confesses to may on the ship like it happened in the show mm-hmm. and that starts to turn her away from the dark side so she instead sees what actually why, happened. Right. And sees his actions as justified as he says. Yeah. Okay. Like he explains what happens. He's being earnest because he thinks he's talking to Osha. Then revealed it's May. It was supposed to be like, oh, here's my chance to take him out. He goes through this whole thing unprompted, like. Mm-hmm. Now that we're here, I can finally tell you what happened. Goes through the whole thing. She second guesses it. She's like, we, we have him. to go back to get my sister. Yeah. Doesn't specify that. Okay, fine. So they go and soul confesses in front of Osha again. I think we have soul and Cora face off. And then it's revealed. It's Cora. Yeah. That's when the helmet gets knocked off. Okay. Um, I think we have soul win the fight and Cora die. And that's what triggers Osha to rage out and kill soul. So then and May Osha tries kills to stop soul. Her. Yeah. Osha kills soul or tries to kill soul. Osha kills soul. Osha kills soul. So then May and Osha fight. What's the, what's the ending to that? I don't think they get to fight. I think that's when Vanestra Rowe shows up with the other Jedi to investigate what's happening. And what, they just arrest both of them? No, they have to run. They're on the run. They don't get to settle their thing. And then there's your... So they're about to fight, but instead of fighting, they work together to run away? They don't work together. They go off on their own. They just run away. Okay, they just run away. And season two is us chasing them? It's them coming back together. All in all, just before we get out of here... It, what let's just rate the acolyte general how it is right now um you can get it give it a little bit like different ratings for different things you know let's let's start you know fighting we are you know we'll do it on star five star rating i gave fighting like four and a half or a five yeah and we're doing out of five five stars yeah, yeah four. but you can do halves you know so it's still four. one out of ten technically yeah. but you said five four. Oh, four, four. yeah so yeah great fighting great fighting um and then we'll get you know like video style you know what the sets pieces and stuff looked like now, are I'd... we talking cinematography or are we talking uh sets sets the actual props and stuff because we already talked about camera not being great um but i think the sets and stuff all looked very good yeah so... um you know it was practical it was a shame that they didn't do those practical sets justice mm. um but i'd probably do a four three and a half or a four yeah i'd say four yeah um, and then we get into story in itself. A three I would have start, started higher 
Oh at yeah, at the beginning of the season, very at much the so. end one. I th- oh one, yeah, damn! Was, I at least was like a two and a half. I was checked out of the story like by episode five. The <laughs> episode when he showed up and killed everyone is where it all started going downhill for me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which is upsetting, but I still have faith in the story. So that's why I'm still giving it like a two and a half. I'm hoping that season two is like, oh, like we get that moment like, oh, my God, why didn't we think about that? You know, something like that. I don't know. I Where don't, it sort of saves itself. I don't itself. think that team is the, oh, big reveal type. Maybe not, but I've got to <laughs> hope. Um, so then overall, The Acolyte, are you recommending for people to watch it because they should watch it or – you can skip it. What are you thinking? Skip it. You think straight up skip it? Yeah. Straight up skip it. I'd almost give it the Game of Thrones treatment. Watch up to episode four and nothing more. <laughs> yeah. Because it's still got good stuff about it. But don't be in love with the story. Yeah. <laughs> Consume this, but don't like it. <laughs> classic classic <laughs> hey we're getting out of here if you like our content you can find us everywhere on the internet at older the letter n dumber squash it together because if you keep it apart it'll show you dumb and dumber and that's not us it's jim carrey and jeff daniels nice uh we have a patreon if you want to support us patreon.com slash older and dumber you can do it starting at five dollars that's less than a cup of coffee at your favorite oh, coffee place to get hours and hours of entertainment early releases and more uh if you want to check out our live plays they are wednesday nights starting at eight uh right now we're playing starfinder we're going to be going into dnd 5e we'd love to have you there and hanging out with us uh we've got some ond bonus content coming out that's all available on our youtube page uh and if you want to follow us individually i'm joey at Sluty mage that's hunter at voice of hunter thank you all so much for joining us for another episode of older and dumber the podcast about two dumb friends just trying to make it on this planet we call Earth. Thank you all for joining us. You dipshits are great. This one went a little long, but hopefully you guys still enjoyed it. Please let us know your thoughts on the Acolyte if you watched it or not. And, you know, we'll do a little back and forth. Or maybe we'll just be Star Wars clickbait for this episode. Hell Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, you guys are great. Thank you so much. And Joey, where are we? Checkpoint Gaming Lounge. Checkpoint Gaming Lounge. The gaming spot where friends are hot one game in the lounge two it's a checkpoint lounge three gaming in the lounge four it's a gaming lounge (laughs) thank you all for joining us like comment share sub bell we will see you again next week's time